JLC PCB contacted me a while ago, asking me if they could sponsor a video on my channel. And I happened to be thinking about making a small PCB for one of my projects, using some SMD components that I already have. So I thought, why not? And in this video, we will take a look at the PCB and the PCB stencils made by JLC PCB, and I will do some SMD reflow soldering later in the video. I only had a handful of PCB designs professionally made over the years, and for that I have been using Seed Studio's Fusion PCB service. So at least I can put things into perspective in terms of uh, quality with JLC PCB's offering. JLC PCB sent me some of their factory photos, and I will share them here, and it appears that they have some pretty nice facilities and very modern tooling. I remember before we had these uh, cheap PCB manufacturing services geared towards hobbyists, making a professional PCB used to be quite expensive. But starting five or six years ago, we started seeing offerings by various PCB manufacturers which were quite affordable. For example, my first PCB order from Fusion PCB, I took advantage of their $10 deal for 10 pieces of uh, 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters PCB, and I thought that was very cheap. So if you look at here, these were indeed 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters. And later I ordered a, uh, another design of the PCB, I think this was a few years back, for the dual fan uh, controller. The first one was for an Arduino board. Now it seems that the uh, custom PCB prices have dropped even further due to the uh, fierce competition out there. For instance, on JLC PCB's website, I just had this printout so you can see um, what is the saying here? The area to advertise a deal is $2 for 10 pieces, and these are for a maximum size of 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters, which are uh, essentially four times the area of what a 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters board I have made. So, which is quite amazing when you think about this, uh, you think about what goes into making these PCBs. I will be very hard pressed to find any blind PCBs that size for the same price. And perhaps even more impressive is that for an additional $9, you can get a uh, 28 by 36, sorry, 28 centimeters by 38 centimeters stainless steel SMD stencil, professionally made as well. The stencils are very important if you are working with SMDs uh, with very small footprints, as applying solder paste manually is not only time-consuming, but sometimes impossible due to the ever-decreasing sizes of the SMD components. Some PCB manufacturers off offer Mylar-based stencils, which are cheaper, but they're less durable. So I'm very pleased to see that stainless steel stencils had become the de facto standard nowadays. And uh, the PCB prices quoted on JLC PCB's website is significantly cheaper than those from Seed Studio's Fusion service. For example, the uh, standard two-layer board, it is priced at around uh, $4.50 at Seed compared to the $2 we saw at JLC PCB. And when you go to four layers, the saving is even more significant. For, for example, the uh, same 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters four-layer board, it would be $32 using JLC PCB versus $45 using Seed Studio. And for six layers, it would be $92 using JLC PCB and uh, whooping $295 using Seed Studio's Fusion service. Now, of course, four layer is probably what a hobbyist would ever get to. So now on the other, uh, on the stencil side of the business, they are quite comparable, but JLC is still about 10% cheaper. So from a pricing perspective, I think JLC PCB is a clear winner here between the two of those anyway. And of course, there are many other PCB manufacturers out there, but Seed Studio's Fusion Service is the only other one I had experience with. And for most of the uh, these kind of services, these different PCB manufacturers' offerings are quite competitive these days. And it also appeared that uh, JLC PCB is affiliated with the online EDA software suite 
uh, Easy EDA. I'm sure that many of you have used it before. So it would be pretty convenient if you use Easy EDA to design your boards. And for my project, um, I did play around with Easy EDA a little bit, but uh, I ended up using Ego for the schematic and board design because I am more familiar with it. And I just simply uploaded my design files to JLCPCB's website without any problem. Now, of course, price is on one side of the equation. Let's take a look at the quality of the boards I received. So I have to say I was uh, quite impressed when the package arrived. Let me zoom out a little bit uh, with this uh, DHL package. And it's uh, actually much heavier than I expected. Now, this was shipped using uh, ex this was uh, sh shipped as an express. So it arrived just uh, three or four days, which was quite impressive from international shipping. But I think the standard price you pay for $9, for example, is the, uh, uh, the 15 days version. And uh, this one uh, does cost a little more. So let's take a look at what is inside. And I had already opened this, but um, I can just show you. They're really nicely packaged. And the top box here, this is the uh, hard PCBs. And uh, so they did include some... Uh, some component samples. I'm not sure if that that's included in all the PCB orders. So we'll take a look at this uh, just in a bit. Actually, let's just open this up. So as you can see, um, it is uh, sealed and uh, the PCBs are in there. Now these ones, they are a little bit of smaller than uh, my previous uh, 5x5. So let's actually open it up. Let me just uh, Open it up here. And now let's take a look at this board. Compare it with uh, what we had before from Seed Studio. So this board I designed is a slightly smaller. Uh, I think it's the same width, 5 centimeters, but it's uh, 1 centimeter short than uh, the ones I had before. Now I did design this uh, in a little bit of hurry, so I can already see that uh, this drill hole, I probably specified the wrong one, so it actually didn't uh, uh, have the drill hole here. But uh, that's my mistake, not the, uh, not the manufacturer's mistake. And uh, so just by looking at this, and it, it's quite comparable, the, uh, the design quality, and the traces certainly has no problem with this very, very small. Uh, traces here and if you see the component here I had is a, a DFN 3 millimeter by 3 millimeter um, device and it has 10 pins so it's a very very small uh, footprint so let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little better and uh, so here we go so that uh, I see here that's a, uh, a DFN device so by the look of it, everything seems to be uh, okay. There's no uh, unedged portion and uh, the smallest trace seems to be just fine. So quality wise, I think it's a pass. So now let's take a look at the, let me zoom it back out. So now let's take a look at the um, stencil. And for the stencil, the packaging is really impressive. And actually at first I thought I didn't know what this big box was and it's quite heavy. And uh, I'm surprised that for international shipping, they, uh, they actually put a lot of uh, protective uh, stuff in. So this whole box is actually protected by uh, the two boards. And I think these boards were just uh, uh, the boards that they used during their manufacturing process. So you can see there are a lot of uh, half drilled uh, holes here. But um, so they have uh, four boards altogether and uh, the actual stencil it's uh, sandwiched in uh, between these two boards and it's really really uh, nice when you look at it of course uh, I will have to take it uh, later I have to open this up later and uh, do the uh, do the uh, apply the solder mask so let me uh, sorry apply the solder paste so let me briefly open this up. I think the reason they cover that is because they don't want uh, uh, any dust to get in there. So now the smallest device again, as you can see here, that's the, uh, 
that's the one right here. That's for the um, for the DFN device. Interestingly, there is a little split in the ground plane for the DFN. Now, of course, um, after I received this, I realized that I didn't specify any uh, fiducial hole on the stencil. So that kind of makes the life a little bit difficult for me to align the uh, PCB uh, with this. So I think some sometime later when I do this, I have to uh, make sure that uh, I can easily align this. But I don't have many components here, so it should not be a problem. Usually you ha do have a uh, fiducial requirement so that you can uh, align them easily when you are doing applying the uh, solder paste. So that is some some uh, little things to uh, remind you of. So the reason you might want to use a manufactured PCB versus just using a, a PCB adapter uh, to mount your surface mount uh, component is that uh, it is increasingly difficult to find chips in hobbyist friendly dip packaging nowadays and some newer chips only come in SMD form. For example, this uh, particular um, DFN chip that is the only form factor it had. So you have no choice but to use the SMD component. Now we could just use adapter for these components but uh, adapters are actually not cheap. And especially if you have a high pin count and very, very close together, like the pins here, then you're going to have some issues with, uh, um, for example, streak capacitance and, uh, and other routing problems, even on a standard uh, perf board. So given the price point these PCB services cost nowadays, there's really no reason not to design your own board, and even if just for prototyping. So let's go to the other room and apply this uh, stencil over the uh, board and uh, line them up and apply some solder paste and begin soldering. Before applying solder paste, we need to do some prep work. We want to make sure that uh, the PCB is secured and uh, so that it will save time and effort later. And as you can see here, I use some boards of the same height and tape them down so that the board we're working with here is nice and secured in the middle. Now we want to set up the uh, stencil. So the stencil is right here and uh, you need to be careful because these uh, sheets of uh, stainless steel is actually pretty sharp. So if you're not careful, you might cut yourself. And uh, lining them up just requires some uh, uh, effort and find the uh, first figure out where the big component so in this case I'm using this uh, surface mount 8 pin IC as my guide to find the rest of the pins so because I'm behind the camera actually I can't, can't really see uh, what is going on here so I am just gonna pause a little bit and uh, we'll line them up and we will take a look and as you can see, we are pretty much uh, lined up. And uh, the one component I most uh, uh, I should be most careful with is this 10-pin DFN device because the pin pitch is really close, and we want to make sure that uh, the solder paste is applied correctly. But now it looks like everything is ready. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a couple of uh, tapes around uh, the perimeter of this uh, area so that we can apply solder paste. So what I'm going to do next is, while uh, I still have it zoomed in, I'm going to apply some uh, generous amount of uh, solder paste on one side, and we are going to use a uh, card so that we can slide it through, and hopefully all the uh, solder paste would be applied correctly. So, and to be honest, I don't know exactly how much I should use, but uh, it should just be fine. And here I'm just going to use one of the, uh, the credit card. Actually, it's not a credit card, but one of the card to apply. So, um, let's uh, take a look to see if that's enough.
uh, so that clearly it wasn't enough and uh, so I'm going to have to uh, apply a little more. In fact, uh, there's probably enough on here. It just uh, didn't get in. Um, this might be enough, but uh, just for to be on the safe side, we will uh, add a little bit more. And uh, let's uh, add in the middle. Okay, so let's do it again. And again, the main area that I'm uh, trying to pay most attention to is that uh, DFN footprint. So, let me do it one more time, back where. And I think we are good. So now let me uh, remove this uh, stencil and we can begin our soldering. Typically, you have about at least a few hours before the uh, solder paste starts drying up. So you have plenty of time. Now let me zoom out and we'll carefully remove the uh, the tape that we had. And I just removed the, uh, the stencil. As you can see, actually, we did a pretty good job. We actually covered all the areas we're supposed to cover. And... Uh, so let's now start placing the components on and we will uh, proceed to soldering afterwards. And uh, so the first one I want to put on is this uh, tiny uh, DFN device. And uh, let me put it on the side, on the board itself. As you can see, it's really, really tiny. So we want to make sure the pinout is right. And let me flip it over. And uh, let's just see here. So this one is... Uh, our key component. So I'm going to. And remember, it doesn't necessarily need to be uh, very, very accurate because when you are doing the reflow, the solder would uh, melt and uh, pull it back into place if it is not 100% uh, aligned correctly. So the next uh, device I'm going to put on is the other. Um, Actually, I'm going to start putting the resistors on. So, for this uh, design, I'm using my spare parts, and uh, the size of these components are largely depends dependent on what we I have here. So, I happen to have many of these components, and as you can see, I used three 305s to in parallel to form the actual value of the 105 that I need. So. These are just, um, it's really not a, uh, you know, it does not need to be exact because you are designing your own board. So that's the other benefit. And, uh, and I'm just going to Again, the actual placement uh, doesn't really matter as long as uh, it is in a general spot. When you do the uh, reflow soldering, it will everything will be pulled back into place. And uh, let's get this shocky dial on. And by the way, I have this camera in front of me, so which is uh, really difficult for me to uh, see things correctly. Um, but hopefully, uh, it will be okay. So let me. Put this uh, C4, let's see, C4 is the one, oh, the wrong one, this is for C4, and uh, the other ones I think are all the smaller ones I had, so C1, yep.
and C2. and C3. And you do notice that I do have a few uh, through-hole components here. That's because these resistor values I don't have uh, in SMD form. So because I'm making my own board, I can uh, design according to what type of uh, material I have. So that's why another convenient way, uh, another reason you sometimes, uh, the flexibility you have when you design your own board. So we only have a few more components. I'm going to put this 8-pin uh, one on. And you can see that uh, this one compared to that DFN one, it seems huge, even though this is actually a pretty small part. part. So now the last two, I think I'm going to need uh, surface mount. Uh, one is for these two inductors. Now. I actually did not have the correct uh, footprint inductor, so I think this one might just do the trick. Actually, it is uh, just about right size. So hopefully that one will work. And if it doesn't, we can always uh, put uh, different ones on later. Um, it. Uh, yeah, okay, so the footprint is okay. All right. So now I have put everything on. Now I just need to um, do the uh, reflow soldering. So let me change the camera angle, and uh, we'll do that. And uh, here's another angle showing you that uh, when all the components are placed on the board. So now let's uh, start the reflow soldering. And I'm just going to use my hot air station. Now it's uh, just heating up. I'm going to adjust the airflow to be a little less because, uh, after all, this is not a huge board, and uh, we do have some very small components. Now, there are many sizes of SMD components you can choose, and if you are building your own circuit, I would recommend uh, choosing the larger size because they're just so much easier to work with. But uh, of course. As you have seen here, uh, that uh, DFN component we have here, you know, it doesn't come in any other sizes other than that uh, DFN. So you just have to deal with that. But uh, in general, you don't want to make your own life much harder than uh, than necessary. So now we'll adjust the uh, the temperature to around uh, 300, uh, 310 degrees. I, usually, it's uh, you know. 300 is definitely enough, but uh, when you are doing a refill yourself, sometimes it doesn't hurt to have it slightly uh, warmer. So now I'm going to bring in the nozzle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, kind of uh, going around to make sure that the board is actually uniformly heated up. And uh, so this is kind of like a preheating. Of course, you can always use a SMD oven for these type of uh, soldering, but if you're not doing it uh, more than a couple of times a year, uh, it doesn't. It really isn't necessary. And uh, one problem of the SMD oven is that uh, the profile you have to set really accurately, and uh, it depends on different batches of different boards, different uh, even components sometimes have slightly different profile. So without uh, carefully uh, measuring the profile or through experiments, sometimes you can get a uh, very uh, bad results. But um, for hobbyists, I think the uh, using a hot air gun is probably uh, more than sufficient, unless you are doing some very critical work with uh, lots of, um, say, uh, BGA devices, and those tend to require very precise uh, soldering profile. So while I got it uh, uh, heated up, I'm going to gradually uh, zero in on some of the, uh, the components so that they will actually be uh, reflowed. So I'm a little concerned about this, uh, this bigger um, inductors because when I was designing it, I thought I had the other size, but I guess I didn't. So we'll see. And the footprint should be big enough, but I just don't know if uh, um, 
you know, the size does look a little bit ridiculous. And as I, we are dwelling over these two large inductors, you can already see that uh, some of the small components are already refilled successfully. And we just need to stay with these two a little longer because uh, they are large in size and uh, it takes a long time for them to heat up. So it's not the end of the world if these two uh, uh, are the wrong size. I can't always find a different sizes one afterwards, but uh, now let's just give it a shot to see if we can solder these two in place. And uh, so now let's move on to the. Uh, and you can see that all these three uh, resistors are. Uh, I just need to. Gently give it a notch. And I can already see that uh, the center uh, DFN chip is uh, soldered correctly because uh, once the solder reflows, it pulls the uh, chip into place. And uh, so here we go. So this one. And this one. And finally, we have our. It's been SOIC. And it looks like that one is resoldered correctly too. So let's see if we uh, we have. Yep, so these are soldered correctly too. Okay, cool. So now we're done soldering. So let's uh, uh, turn off the hot air workstation and uh, let's remove this uh, board and uh, see what we got. And I just brought this uh, back to the other side of the lab, and as you can see, the soldering we just did was pretty decent. And uh, just a little bit of inspection on that uh, DFN chip, and you can see, at least from this angle, all the pins are uh, reflowed correctly. So I don't see any issue. Of course, I still need to put the other resistors on and uh, start testing this board. My original plan was to uh, make everything into the same video. Uh, after I soldered this board, I wanted to test it, but uh, it seems like this video is already long enough, so I will save that till the next time. And again, thanks for JLC PCB for providing me these boards and sponsoring this video. And if you are making any custom PCBs, I strongly recommend checking them out. They offer a very competitive uh, product at a very reasonable price. If you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and do remember to subscribe and share. I will catch up the next time.